Real quickly before I jump into the video, I want to let you guys know about something in relation to the weapon orders within Call of Duty World War II. This is something that these are being actually amended in how they are presented. So previously we had some in the special orders, starting with the base weapon variants, then we saw those move over to contracts, then we ended up getting weekly orders in the sense of free weapon variants for a various challenge. But now this is actually being changed around to the point where we are going to be getting daily weapon challenges for variants, but also we'll be getting those contracts as well for the base weapons rotated in and out and everything like that. But that said, we're going to be able to see daily weapon orders starting yesterday, I believe it was, in which we got a Lewis variant. Today, we actually have our first heroic variant ever given out for free within Call of Duty World War II. That is the 1911 Totalize 2 variant, and that's available right now in the daily orders from Major Howard. So make sure you guys go take advantage of that. It's going to be gone by 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow, and I believe 6 p.m. GMT. So make sure you guys jump on this. Even if you aren't somebody that uses pistols, it's a very simple challenge for a free heroic weapon. It's 15 tactical knife kills, so that's something you might need to rank up your pistols a little bit, but once you get there, it should probably take you 5 to 10 minutes depending on what game mode and map you end up playing on. So that said, want to keep you guys in a loop. Keep your eyes open for everything that may be coming on the horizon here with weapon updates because we are going to see a lot of free variants given to us now, and I'm really hoping for that M1928 Wayfinder 2 variant to come maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe sometime soon, but I really want that one of the new weapon variant. So keep your eyes open. We're going to be getting a lot of stuff here within the orders and the way that we unlock free weapons. So I want to let you guys know about that, but now back to the regularly scheduled content. So last week I had the privilege to go out to Sledgehammer Games and actually record early footage of DLC 2 with War Machine. And upon debuting the gameplay and streaming some of the zombie stuff and all that, I got asked the question a lot, was there a new event available at the build that we played at Sledgehammer? And that's a very valid question. We saw an event with World War 2's DLC 1, that being the Resistance, and then we also saw two intermittent seasonal ones as well. So it only makes sense that there will be one for DLC 2, but upon actually being there and playing it, we didn't have anything that actually gave us an indication as to an event other than just simply the logic behind it. So that said, when we were debuting the gameplay, the question came up a lot to which I said I wasn't necessarily expecting something because we hadn't seen anything in terms of the trailer for DLC 2 that hinted towards an event, but I said probably about a week to two weeks after the launch of DLC 2, which by this time is in just a couple of days time and then the week following, and that was my prediction from the get-go. Well, I'm still sticking to those guns, and I'm going to break it down here a little bit of the reasoning as to why and what we could end up seeing, what could hint towards this coming within next week or the week after, and what all we can expect for an upcoming event for World War II. So it all stems out of yesterday. Once again, all eyes were on World War II to see if there would be anything that gave us an event either launching 12 hours after the event went live when they normally do those sorts of updates for World War II, if it'd be added in from the get-go. But unfortunately, we did not get anything that actually gave us full confirmation of an event coming or anything that jumped us right into an event. But interestingly enough, what we did get was an update to World War II for the DLC 2 that provided us with a ton of interesting clues. For all of yesterday, you could play around with this and check it out for yourselves, but now it's actually been since hotfixed. That was something that was addressed earlier today, and we'll talk about that here in just a second in the video. But for all of yesterday in the game, we had a completely different quick menu UI that featured Butcher in a brand new uniform that was never seen before, hinting at something new. And we also saw Butcher in the quick supply drop menu for going to the Quartermaster. But if you either went into the headquarters to get to the Quartermaster, or if you accessed it through that quick menu, you'd end up seeing that we ended up instead having our female Quartermaster actually in the game and presentable in that capacity. So that said, the two didn't really add up. So something was off there, but as for what, once again, that only came down to inferences that we ourselves could maybe come to in relation to the logic of maybe a new event coming. But we actually also saw a bunch of other things added in because what we saw was a completely redesigned headquarters that looked leveled, perhaps once again for a new event. And the big thing that everybody latched onto and is honestly a huge indicator as this was that there were weapon challenges for five new weapons. The Sterling, the Type 5, the Type 38, the M2 Carbine, and the ITRA or ITRA Burst. And a little bit further on the weapons themselves, we ended up seeing in the paint jobs, if you ended up going to the paint shop and trying to create your own custom camo, if you went over to the World War II category and scrolled all the way down to the bottom, you can see that we see the icons that would appear in the kill feed for those specific weapons. Plus, we also saw the layers for the components of a brand new division pack. So that's something that we got all that stuff added in with yesterday's DLC 2 update. But the interesting part about it is that if you go and take a look for any of that content, save for the things in the paint jobs, those layers, everything else was removed. 
that was hot fix today earlier in the day whenever we ended up getting a playlist update going live changing out what i imagined was only going to be that of the daily order for the new weapon variant but instead we actually got a decent bit of stuff added in on top of that on the surface the hot fix that sledgehammer addressed publicly fixed issues with gun game and prop hunt not awarding xp as intended it fixed the recent and trending tabs not showing up in the emblem gallery it fixed the issue where patterns was not showing up in the emblem editor or in the crafting of paint jobs and it also fixed the issue in the firing range where if you use the LMGs in a bipod, you could actually go through all of your ammo and it would not actually replenish. So that stuff was what was publicly announced with this hotfix, but again, those other things that you probably weren't supposed to see, those got updated to where we now see the standard quartermaster for those menus and the others got fixed and updated as well that they're completely taken out of the game. So that said, when can we expect to see both these and an event that may bring these back? Well, that's where we have to break things down a little bit further and actually take a look at the different marketing windows for each of these events. So when we take a look at it, once again, we've had three events thus far, Winter Siege, Resistance, and Shamrock and Awe, the first two being relatively longer and then the third being a little bit shorter compared to the others. But that said, Winter Siege was something that lasted from December 8th to January 2nd, which was three weeks and four days, but on the calendar of events, it was actually four weeks. So we had four things because of the time frame they overlap in which we ended up seeing four weeks of different content going out and different updates within. Then we had the Resistance event, that being 21 days or three weeks later, going from January 23rd to February 27th, which lasted for five weeks. So we had a full five weeks of content and updates for that weekly, and the time between both the resistance and the next event that being shamrock and awe was 14 days or two weeks then shamrock and awe lasted from march 13th to april 3rd which was only three weeks so the shortest event that we've had out of any that we've seen thus far and the time between that and when dlc 2 launched that's when people started to think that we'd get that new event but that was only seven days or one week in between then and that date that everyone thought of being april 10th the release date of dlc 2 would actually not fall into the pattern that we start to see emerging here because because like I said, we ended up seeing the time between Winter Siege and Resistance being 21 days or three weeks. Resistance to Shamrock and Awe was 14 days, which was two weeks. So right now, at the very earliest, I would expect it to come on the 17th and then maybe on the 24th. But it gives this once again seesaw back and forth between two or three weeks in between each individual event, giving time for the developers to get things back to normal to start planning implementation on how things will work in terms of new content, different events and featured modes that will happen, all that sort of stuff. I'm no game engineer or developer to know for certain, but that seems like a lot of stuff to cram into one week of time in terms of development and getting an entire game ready for something that massive. Once again, just one week after another event ends. But that said, if we end up taking a look at the 17th or the 24th, that's actually conveniently placed within multiple different windows pertaining to Call of Duty, not only World War II, but the franchise overall, because that will be right in between the launch of DLC 2 on PlayStation 4. Players will still be really enthralled with everything like that, going through with the double XP featured playlist for the DLC specific modes in World War II on PlayStation 4. But then we also have a couple of weeks later, DLC coming out on Xbox One and PC, presumably gonna be May 10th. So 30 days after when we saw it on PlayStation 4, but it also falls in between the window of time between World War II's content and then Black Ops 4's worldwide community reveal on May 17th. So it'd be a perfect time to start something up in World War II, have it die down, let Black Ops 4 take that peak a little bit in interest, then come back a few weeks later with another event such as a smaller thing like maybe Shamrock and Awe, but a summer theme. So for me, I'd say to keep your eyes out for next week, the 17th or the 24th, the week after that Tuesday, then we'll end up seeing new stuff added in for World War II. Now, that said, some things I would definitely anticipate coming would be not only one, the weapons, those five weapons that were in the Marksman challenges of World War II. I would imagine that since they are in the challenges, they are pretty much ready to go within the actual game. So a launch of those. But my one thing and one stipulation with this is I don't think that we'd get all five at once. That seems like way too much to release all at one time, especially when those are ranged weapons, not even melee variants that we end up seeing in terms of just cosmetic reskins of how you end up meleeing in game. Those would be all ranged weapons and that just seems a bit too much. So my guess is maybe they do it like how Resistance did it in which we have two different waves of content going out. One initially launching how the 
Volk led that first wave with the Resistance actual event launching, and then two or three weeks later, we saw the Reich's Revolver and the other pistol added in as well for that second wave of content. So I would imagine it does something like that, especially if we end up seeing an event lasting a little bit longer. The Resistance event for the DLC to cover both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC exclusivity zones, that was something that it was extended to five weeks so that it could overlap into each individual community. And I would imagine that it does something of the same here with this event, whatever this may end up being. So we might very well see two waves of content going out. Now, one thing that I would love to see, but I don't think we'll see is a free map because we got one with Winter Siege, that being Winter Carrington. And then we saw one with Shamrock and Awe as well, that being Shipment 1944. So I wouldn't expect because it's tied to the DLC to see a new map coming with the event, but maybe we end up getting at in the next event that we have once again in between DLC 2 and DLC 3. But that said, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up here at this one because once again, I wanna give you guys some clarity on not only my thoughts, but what I also think is just a very logical standpoint as to when the next event is happening. Obviously, once again, it is not live right now because we got the update yesterday. Nothing really revealed itself other than these few separate clues that are now since patched up, except for a few of them. Once again, kind of quirky to me that we did not see the removal of those layers in the paint jobs, but I guess it is what it is. But again, after being asked so many times on my thoughts on it, I figured I wanted to break it down a little bit further because with so many people thinking it was going to happen Tuesday, when it didn't, I think it's only logical as to think about when we can end up seeing it, if we'll see it at all. So again, I think either next Tuesday or the week after we'll end up seeing the release of the new events in World War II, and then maybe a trailer coming, say, tomorrow or Friday for the event itself, or maybe next Thursday or next Friday, depending on if it is a week later after that as well. But that said, hopefully you found this insightful. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. And if you had the question, hopefully it answered it for you. But that said, drop your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to out of this new new event here within World War II, whatever it may be and whenever it may come. Do you want a new featured playlist? Do you want a new map? Do you want new weapons? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. No right or wrong answer. Just want to get your thoughts. But hopefully you guys enjoyed and if you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II. Anything regarding updates, news, information on events like this stuff, best class setups, tips, tricks, all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, trying to get more active over there as well. So that link is as well in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys had a fantastic day. Once again, don't forget to take advantage of that 1911 heroic variant in Major Howard's. Only there for today. So make sure you check that out. I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Take care and peace.